Hi everyone, I'm Evelyn. Welcome to my very sketchbook focused art channel and to my first starting a new sketchbook video. A lot of the sketchbook sessions I filmed were to fill up old sketchbooks or random notebooks that I practice in. So I'm excited to start a brand new one this time and share how I create thumbnail sketches, plan painting compositions and overall hope to use this sketchbook to organize all my illustration ideas better and find a creative outlet beyond just practicing art fundamentals or master studies. I hope you have your own sketchbook ready. To get ready I first took stock of what I had. Would I need anything? Is there a format or surface that feels inspiring? For illustrations lately I've been mostly painting on watercolor paper with a layer of gesso. That allows for a lot of detail and it also scans or photographs beautifully. But for this next idea, a piece for a gallery exhibit submission, I wanted to use a material that would look good in person even without a frame. So stretched canvas with a clean edge or cradled panels instead of flat ones. I really like these cradled panels by Phoenix as their wooden edge looks beautiful on its own without needing paint and it's easy to install hooks or wires at the back. I have to admit I haven't painted on canvas in a few months, so that's something I want to practice, but probably not for this gallery submission since I'm a coward and afraid of failure. While I use sketchbooks, a lot of them are very small or they are specifically for watercolors. So a lot of my layout sketches have ended up on loose paper instead and been lost to the chaos. Looking through some of these assorted sketches and the little doodles in random sketchbooks and notebooks really made me want to dedicate a larger sketchbook to concept art and creative explorations. Opening a new sketchbook for the first time gives me this sense of potential, of the endless, or in this case 160 pages worth of, possibilities. Despite what all of my sketching videos might suggest, I actually haven't bought a sketchbook in a few years, since 2019 even. I've been filling old, unfinished ones, repurposing paper that I disliked for new art media or used random booklets and notebooks. My portrait practice sketchbook was originally a flea market find. So to actually research and pick out a paper type and a sketchbook format felt exciting. This is a Hanemule draw and sketch sketchbook. With 160 pages at 140 gram paper, ideal for pencil drawings in particular. And I'll be testing a couple different supplies on my first sketchbook spread. It was important to me to dive into this sketchbook with something that I felt personally connected to. A painting idea I was passionate about and a style I want to pursue artistically. I think of this first spread as setting the tone for the sketchbook overall. The exhibit I'm submitting to has the theme ephemeral. The idea I want to explore is the fleeting nature of human life compared to how long the universe has been around. How our lives are just little flickers, like sparks or candle flames, but also how they're still meaningful and beautiful in spite or because of that. I started with thumbnail sketches. During the thumbnail sketch phase, I usually draw without any references, but just explore compositions at a very basic level. How large should a figure be? A close-up portrait or a bust or even half body or full body? Could there be movement to the pose and composition, or do I want it to feel contained and static? I quickly felt that to get a better feel for if this idea would even work, I'd have to actually sketch in more detail. Some paintings I can see clearly in my mind before painting, while others need more sketching to figure out, and this is the latter. I wanted to put the Hahnemühle paper in the sketchbook to the test with multiple colored pencil layers and I absolutely love it. The paper makes single light color or graphite layers look beautiful and smooth, has just enough grain to feel good when shading 
and holds up without a problem to multiple layers. The next element I wanted to test was gold leaf. In the ephemeral painting, I want there to be a golden flame connected to the portrait, a symbol for life and reminding of a candle flame. While I love embellishing with acrylic golden paints or gold ink or watercolor, metal leaf embellishments just bring a whole other level of reflective to a painting, and it's been too long since I last used it. I really recommend doing some tests of your own when using metal leaf adhesive, Depending on the brand, the surface I use it on, or even the humidity in the room, I have to adjust how thickly I apply, how long I let it rest, and then also how long I wait before pressing down and brushing off the edges at the very end. You can see the first try didn't stick at all. I had waited too long, exactly as long as the booklet said to, by the way, before putting on the gold leaf. I gave it another try with a thicker layer and only a very short wait time. And that worked much better. I use very soft watercolor brushes to remove the gold leaf, but still it can occasionally tear. I personally like the rougher edges, but if I want a clean sharp edge for this painting, I might have to put down the gold leaf first and then paint over the edges in acrylics. Instead of going to look for references that inspire me first and then create a composition around them, I sketch first and then go search for reference material that would fit, or make my own. I like looking through the photography website Unsplash for general ideas, because unlike Pinterest or similar websites, this one actually has the names of the photographers credited everywhere. But I don't use those for direct references. And then also combine portrait or figure references by, for example, Howard Lyon, a Dorca stock or Satin Silla, with my own way worse pictures. My own pictures are often my hands in specific poses or lighting that the portrait reference didn't have, or very awkwardly my face if I need a specific expression. I then combine all those to get the final result and improvise from there. I've also been using more and more 3D modeling and posing, especially for fantasy art, so if you'd like to see more of my process for that, let me know. Next time I sat down to plant this painting, I started with a lighting study. This isn't an actual painting sketch, but a look at how light from below, the gold leaf flame, would hit the planes of the face. This is an example of me combining references. The portraits with the overall expressions and beautiful lighting I had found didn't include that light from below, of course. So to add that to the painting, I would need to know how it looks on its own. Then I can tone the light down so it doesn't compete with the main light sources, maybe just add a hint of warmth on her chin, lip and under her nose. For this sketch I used softer pencils, including the Blackwing Matte pencil that I've fallen in love with recently and relied on my kneaded eraser to sculpt the portrait. After the study, I went to the main focus of the day. The two painting ideas that had finally crystallized in my mind. For the square format, which automatically makes the subject feel more static and stable, I went with a portrait, with just her hand reaching into the frame to hold, or even summon, the candle flame. I loved the idea of a spiral galaxy framing her like a halo. And overall, I really like this idea because of how simple it is. I think for the final painting I'll have to shoot some more hand references, 
The blue colored pencil I'm using here is my favorite Prismacolor shade, Indigo, a perfect fit for outer space art. The second painting idea is more complex and a bit more ambitious. Here the figure is more dynamic, her arms and hands in movement and her gesture hopefully looks like she's summoning this flame or protecting it, instead of the more delicate and passive approach of the first painting idea. That means I'll have to shoot some proper hand references for this one too, probably holding some kind of LED lamp to get the hands lit from below. The background for this painting are the famous Pillars of Creation. Every space photograph of them takes my breath away, and I can't wait to try and paint them. Overall, this second one feels closer to some of my fantasy art, while the first idea is focused on the portraiture itself. I'd love to give both of them a try, because they are so different. Overall, I'm incredibly happy with the format, the paper thickness and resilience, even the adhesive fluid didn't show on the opposite side of the page. And how this is just the perfect size to both sketch at home or take with me to draw outdoors or at cafes. The size I chose was this square 25 by 25 centimeter, so that I'd have enough room for multiple connected sketches per page instead of just my usual single figure or single portrait. It's my first time using a square format sketchbook. Horizontal A4 sketchbooks can be difficult to fit on a desk, while vertical ones have you drawing closer to the binding and feel a bit constricting. The square one just felt like a wonderful compromise. This Hahnemühle sketchbook lies perfectly flat and not having a ring binding in the center like my other main sketchbook is also a great change from what I'm used to. So both pages of a spread are comfortable to draw on. This sketchbook spread now is a mood board I can look at while painting, even if the sketches aren't an exact representation of what I want the poses and faces and hands to look like. The lighting study and gold leaf tests too will be useful when tackling the actual paintings. And I found that doing concept sketches like these, no matter if on loose paper or in a sketchbook, help me expand my visual library and remove a lot of the pressure when facing the blank canvas or panel. I hope this sketchbook becomes a great tool for developing ideas, for taking my time with exploration, and maybe find a closer approximation of my art style. Let me know which of these two you'd like me to tackle first, and if you'd like to see a painting process for either of these. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next art video.